Hello and welcome back to another Scripture Bite. I'm Suzanne Palmer and if you are enjoying these teaching videos, please feel free to share, like, and click subscribe below. So if you're ready, let's look at today's Scripture Bite. And it's found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Today we talk about living free from prisons to praise. Well, over a year ago, I had the privilege of speaking at a women's prison in Kenya, East Africa. If anyone's ever been to a prison, as with most of them, it's a place lacking in color, lots of fences and bars. It's a place that looked to be filled with despair, a place of isolation and punishment. And it would be difficult to imagine anything lovely or joyful in a place like this. Time can move very slowly and depression and hopelessness can become a way of life. And because of that, the thing that it's most focused upon, everything can become dark and gray prison. It's not just an institution. It can be many things to many people. Perhaps it's a terrible pain that you live with in your body every day. Perhaps you feel trapped in a loveless relationship. It could be a job that you hate, a physical handicap, a depression, or even an addiction that you struggle with. Any situation that seems as if there's no end in sight, well, it can feel or seem like a prison sentence. And I truly believe more people are trapped in this sort of prison than are physically being held behind bars. But what you need to hear today is although you might not be able to change your physical location or your current situation, you can choose whether your spirit will be held captive or not. We may not be locked up in a physical prison, but very often we are still in a prison of our own making. Because you see our outward circumstances, while they don't define us, they only become a prison because we allow them to. True freedom is that of the inward man. Man. Freedom on the outside without inner freedom provides no real joy or satisfaction. And as I look beyond the lens of this camera, I sense that many of you feel as if you are in a prison too. And to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes I feel like I'm in a prison. I feel stuck in situations or seasons in my life in which it seems very great and it's hard for me to focus on anything else. It's like being in a little sailboat out in the middle of the ocean. If there's no wind, it can go nowhere. And this boat is totally at the mercy of the wind. And waiting for that wind to blow can seem like an eternity. Time moves slowly, and if there's no change in my situation and no one seems to be coming, I feel isolated and then tired and frustrated and grumpy and helpless. It seems like a prison sentence because I can't get myself out of it. And oftentimes, I have no idea why I'm even there in the first place. And God seems especially quiet in times like these. But there is a way to move through these seasons and come through them with a testimony on our lips. And today I want to look at some real prisoners in the Word of God, what they endured, what they learned, and how they came through it to victory. And Holy Spirit, we're asking that you teach us how to apply your Word and these principles in our very own lives today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in your Bible, you can read in Acts 16, 16 through 38, the story of Paul and Silas. And I just want to recap it for a moment. Paul and Silas are in prison. They're beaten severely for casting out a demon of a fortune-telling girl, which started a riot. And because the fortune-teller's owners were angry that they weren't going to be making money off this girl anymore or her gifting, they got Paul and Silas in trouble. And they're in tremendous physical pain. We find them with their backs split open from the beating and they're forced to sit with their arms and their legs in these wooden stocks in a dark, filthy prison cell. Now about midnight, Paul and Silas, they begin praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners, well, they're listening to them too because they couldn't help but hear them. Well, suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of that prison were shaken. And all at once, all of the prison doors flew open. Everyone's chains came loose. About this time, the jailer's in a panic because he's responsible for all of these prisoners and if even one of them escapes, he's going to pay for it with his own life. And he's already expecting the worst, that the prisoners have escaped and he was getting ready to take his own life when Paul calls out, don't harm yourself because we're all still here. Well, immediately the jailer turns the lights on and he bows before Paul and Silas, who are still in those stocks, by the way. He's terrified and he releases them right away. And the very first thing that that jailer says is, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas tell them, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Paul and Silas shared more about the Lord with them and, and they were saved. 
Now remember, this is all happening while their backs were still split open from the beating and their bodies were still in severe pain. It's only after the salvation experience that the jailer cleans their wounds and then they have this family ba baptismal impromptu service right there in the jail and, and he takes them back to his house and feeds them and he's filled with joy because he and his family have come to believe in Jesus that night. Well, the next morning, Paul and Silas are released from the prison and they go back to that little church that they were at, Lydia's church in Thyatira, where they set about encouraging this little group of believers before moving on to the next town. Now, there's so much in this story. It's both amazing and powerful. Besides the supernatural elements, I want us to take a look at what set the stage for such a dynamic move of God that led to multiple salvations in one night. First of all, we see Paul and Silas imprisoned for no real reason at all. They're doing good things. Well, suddenly they find themselves in a horrible place in physical agony and discomfort. And what are they doing? Well, they're praying and singing hymns. Now, this is not a natural human response, but it's a supernatural one. Paul and Silas are being Christ's followers inside of that prison, even as they were Christ's followers on the outside of it. Their location and circumstances may have changed, but their calling had not. And if I were to guess, I'd say that they were most likely praying out loud for the lost souls in the city of Thyatira. There was a great spiritual opposition to what was taking place in Paul and Silas's ministry because this is the very beginning of a great church. It is this church that's mentioned as one of the seven churches Jesus speaks to John about in the book of Revelations chapter 2. It's a church which is recognized for its love and its faith and its service and perseverance. Now who would have thought that this would be the future for this church from where Paul and Silas were sitting in that dirty prison cell that night? Only God knew what was being birthed in the spirit through Paul and Silas's suffering. Is there a lesson for us in that as well? Well, I think Paul and Silas were probably also praying for the lost souls that were being held in that prison with them, as well as for their guards and the jail keeper. They were singing out the Psalms about the mighty deeds of the Lord, of his unfailing love and all of his mighty attributes. And this was most likely the song that that jailer fell asleep to and his spirit man absorbed. We find that this true sacrifice of praise, it softened the hard ground of the jailer's heart, which is a miracle in itself because we know that individuals who work in law enforcement, well, they often have to have an extra hard layer on their hearts for self-protection because of all the darkness that they're exposed to, as well as the terrible things that they have to see. But not only did that praise soften this jailer's heart, that praise was enough to release something both powerful and specific in the atmosphere that brought a rapid response from the heaven. When those prayers and petitions and the praises reached the throne room of God, he was provoked into action. God sent out an earthquake that got the attention of everyone that was present in that place. And believe me, I know firsthand about earthquakes. Here in Anchorage, Alaska, where I live, I have experienced very large, very frightening earthquakes where things were shaken and doors were opened and things were falling on the floor and crashing all around me. God had every bit of my attention as I held onto my son and called out his name in prayer so I can really understand this part of the story. An earthquake is a very effective device to get your attention. And as the earthquake was shaken that prison, it also did one more thing. It loosened the chains on every prisoner in that jail, not only the righteous inmates. What Paul and Silas did in that place, it speaks to my heart because even in their suffering, they were compelled by the love of Christ within them to minister to others, providing them with an opportunity for real inward freedom, while they themselves didn't experience it outwardly. In other words, even though they were stuck in the stocks and in that prison, they weren't going anywhere anytime soon, they moved beyond that. They were more consumed with setting others free than in their own immediate comfort or freedom. It was in this place that the real doors of freedom and authority burst open. The tables now turned and we find the head of the prison, that jailer bowing before these two prisoners, begging to know personally the God that they had so passionately represented through prayers and praise and their living example. That earthquake that God released was just an extra bonus because Mark 16, 17 tells us that signs and wonders follow those that believe. So even if you feel you're stuck in a prison of pain or a bad relationship, any situation that seems hopeless, when you get to the point that regardless of where you find yourself, you will praise and live in a way that you would see others free, even though you yourself still feel bound, 
watch and see what God will do. We need to learn an important lesson because it's not always about us. Sometimes we have to go through some unpleasant stuff because there are people that we will minister to as a result of going through this process. Although it didn't seem just in the natural for Paul and Silas to have been in that prison, if they hadn't been in that jail singing and praising God in spite of their pain and suffering, well, that jailer and his family, well, they would never have had the desire or the opportunity to receive Christ. This was the beginning of the work of a little church in Thyatira that God had great plans for. What those two men endured was a testimony and also an opportunity for God to show off a little bit, demonstrating how he can and still does deliver his children. When you find this place of internal freedom like Paul and Silas, who understood that real freedom is not defined by physical or emotional borders, when you're truly free in Christ Jesus, you pay no attention to the chains, the stalks and the bars on the outside, which are your circumstances. Stances. Instead, you begin to see yourself as a spiritual prisoner of war and you approach this unholy imprisonment with spiritual weapons, weapons of humility and love and joy and peace and praise, the word of God and power. Remember, God loosed the chains. He didn't remove them. He loosened them. God allows us to partner with him, helping to remove those chains from those which are still bound. When we shift our focus outward and upward, we praise, we pray, we pour on love. We're filled with his joy and, and surrounded by peace that can't be rationally understood. Then we get to partner with Holy Spirit out of our personal prisons, and watch the metal bands around wounded hearts melt, chains of addiction break off, and the constant neediness of others, well, it fades away as we help to position them in the path of the only one who can really meet and supply all of their needs. Our spirits were never meant to be imprisoned, and God's glory never will be. And we need to understand that. Sometimes God delivers us quickly out of a situation or, cir or circumstance, and sometimes he delivers us through them, but he always delivers us, and we must learn to trust him and keep praising him even while we're waiting for his deliverance to come. And don't always need to be in such a hurry to get out of those circumstances because sometimes he has something for you in the process to both learn and do. Let's fast forward a few years and find Paul yet again in a prison cell. And this time it's a Roman prison. And this time he's chained to a guard. In 2 Timothy 2.9, he writes, This is my gospel for which I'm suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained or imprisoned. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So intent was Paul in living out the words that he left for each one of us that every time his guard was changed, probably three or four times each day, they had to literally replace them because in a few hours of time, Paul had managed to persuade them into making a decision to follow Christ. Paul was physically chained on the outside, but he lived his life free and to the fullest extent because Jesus Christ lived inside of him. We have an expression in America that goes like this, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. In other words, you can choose to take something really bad and turn it around for something really good. It's possible to shift our focus from the difficult places that we find ourselves in, whether it is in the physical, the emotional, or the spiritual realm. And through the help of Holy Spirit, we can learn to be free on the inside, not being ruled by emotions that make us feel helpless or circumstances that seem bigger than we are. We serve a mighty God who has chosen to live with us and inside of us. And his name is Emmanuel, God with us. And he's called Jehovah Bel Perazin, the God of the breakthrough. And he will sustain us and give us strength to make it through these difficult times. And he'll also give us strength to break free of the things that we have become trapped in. The writer of Hebrews tells us to lay aside every weight that sin which so easily entangles us. Now, remember at the beginning, I was talking to you about visiting a prison in Kenya and, and asking how could anything be joyful or beautiful in such a hard place? Well, I've never in my life seen anything quite like this. The commandant of this prison is a Holy Ghost-filled, born-again believer in Christ, and the matron of the women's prison is also. And every Friday at the end of the day, the prisoners are brought into the courtyard, and a massive praise and worship event takes place, and the Word of God is preached. And the joy and the presence of the Lord is so evident in that place and upon the faces of these inmates. As you see, the prisoners and the guards singing in worship on a team together, and the commandant and the prisoners, well, they're dancing together before the 
Lord. This place that should be a place of despair, well, it's been transformed into a sanctuary for the Most High God where lives are transformed and where freedom truly reigns. Although they may be in a prison in the physical realm, they are free in Jesus Christ in their hearts. So let that encourage you as you examine your own heart. If God can do it for them there, he'll surely do it for you wherever you find yourself right now. Today's scripture bite was 2 Timothy 2.10. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. And today, we talked about living free from prisons to praise. Well, salvation, well, it means much more than inviting Jesus into your heart for forgiveness of sins. It comes from the Greek word sozo. And it carries the idea of being free in sickness in your body and being free from demonic attacks and oppression. In other words, it's being free in every area of your body, soul, mind, and spirit, your will, and your emotions. His blood makes us completely and 100% totally free. And you can claim this today, that salvation that is in Christ Jesus. If you want this freedom, whether you're bound in depression and you need freedom in your finances, freedom from alcohol or drugs, freedom in your relationships, anything that you are struggling with or has become a prison for you, I want you to know that today it's possible for you. You can have this freedom. And even if you've never asked the Lord into your heart, you've never asked him to come and take away your past mistakes and live inside of you, this is your time for a new beginning because Jesus is here. And that same God that sent that earthquake to Paul and Silas, that loosened the chains, well, he's here right now and he's ready to loosen yours as well. But in order for you to become completely free of them, you must ask and believe and then begin to live your life free. The Word of God tells us whom Jesus sets free, he is really and truly free. So open your heart and receive this today. Father God, thank you for your word that has gone out today. Thank you for showing us the places in our lives where we feel imprisoned internally. It's not your intention that we remain in this state because you gave your son so that we could live totally free. And today we choose to receive your freedom. We invite you into those areas where the chains have held us fast and the lies and the bondage and the hopelessness. And we ask you to loosen them right now in Jesus' mighty name to set us free in our hearts and in our minds and our emotions and our body and our soul in our spirits. Give us songs of praise and victory even in the hard seasons and help us to shift our focus off of ourselves and to look to see what you're doing in the midst of all of this and then help us to partner with you working for your kingdom in the midst of it. Lead us into quiet times where we can grow deeper in intimacy with you. And Holy Spirit, forgive us for holding offenses and choosing other things instead of staying close to you. Bring us back again into right relationship with you. And let us be intentional in our worship and our devotion. And Father, if there's one who doesn't yet know you as their Lord and Savior, just simply pray, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask that you would come into my heart right now and forgive me of my sins and be the Lord of my life from this day forward. I believe you are the Son of the living God, and I give myself to you right now. Thank you for saving me. Help me to grow to know you more as I open up your word and lead me to others who will walk with me in this new adventure that's found in you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So if you were blessed or challenged by this message today or you received Jesus as your Savior, I would love to pray for you and I'd love to hear about it as well. So please leave me a message in that comment section below. And remember God's word, the Bible is the only thing that will ever satisfy or sustain you. It holds the answers to life's questions and it's the very best way to get to know Him. And so until next time, I invite you to open it up and enjoy another scripture bite. Bye-bye.